This is Wilmington, North Carolina, today. This was Wilmington, North Carolina, on November 10, 1898, when mobs of white men marched into the streets, destroying the office of Wilmington's only black newspaper in what has become known as the Wilmington Race Riot. White supremacy reigned, and speaking out against it could have deadly consequences. This was at a time when segregation was the cultural norm, and great efforts were made by those opposed to black equality to keep black people not only separate, but unheard and powerless. Hearing this, you may think Wilmington must have been primarily white, while in fact, it was quite the opposite. Wilmington had a black majority, with 20 of its 22 barbershops being black-owned. Regardless, racism still ran rampant, and racial tensions began to bubble over at the start of the 1898 political season. Violence was a part of the Democratic Party's plan to prevent black people from voting, and the party founded its political campaign on propaganda. The News and Observer, a white newspaper, ran political cartoons and articles instilling fear in the white public that African Americans were going to dominate North Carolina politics, despite making up only 33% of North Carolina's overall population. The political propaganda cartoons depicted black people as social pariahs preying on the system and also as winged serpents and devils preying on white women. The News and Observer ran a year-old speech by a Georgia woman by the name of Rebecca Felton, which urged Southern men to, quote, lynch a thousand times a week if necessary, end quote, in order to protect against black rapists. Alexander Manley was the editor of the Daily Record, Wilmington's only black newspaper. Manley called out these slanderous accusations with an editorial. In it, he explained that many white women willingly sleep with black men. On the morning after Election Day, November 10th, a heavily armed mob of approximately 2,000, including Red Shirts, a white supremacist militia group, stormed the streets. They burned down the building that housed the Daily Record. The streets of Wilmington became the scene of a riot, and it is estimated up to 300 people were killed. Manley had already been run out of town. Though we have come a long way from the events of Wilmington in 1898, it is important to remember what happened there, and to understand the power the news media and the politicians behind it can truly have. <laughs>